What I want to talk about today is, of course, how to uh, increase your direct mail conversions using IP targeting. There's going to be a lot of aha moments, a lot of really interesting stuff here, especially if you do uh, direct mail and you want to increase those conversions, and this is going to be the way to do it. What we're going to talk about today is what is IP targeting, uh, using direct mail with IP targeting, a product called Venue Replay, and a product called Reverse Append. Um, I handed out a glossary of terms so that if I say something, you're like, what is that? You can refer to the glossary of terms, um, and so you can kind of get a better understanding of what that <laughs> means. But at the same time, if you do have a question about anything, and I anticipate and welcome questions because this is something that even when I first heard about it, and I'm kind of slow though, but I had to have the, the person explaining it to me do it a couple of times because it is kind of hard sometimes to grasp these concepts. So please, if you have questions, don't be afraid to stop me. So the first thing we have to do is talk about what is IP targeting. But before we do that, we have to talk about what is an IP address. An IP address is the numerical label that's attached to your computer when you are logged into a Wi-Fi. For instance, if you're logged into our Wi-Fi right now, the IP address associated with your device is going to be the um, IP address that's associated with NextPage. So it's basically a way to network interface. Um, anybody who's attached to a network or Wi-Fi is going to have a unique IP address associated with that location. IP targeting is matching the physical address of a recipient with a mailing list with their home computer or their laptop using a special algorithm so that digital ads can be delivered. So basically what that means is, is that when you have a direct mail list, you have a list of customers and you have their physical addresses, we can run that through an algorithm and at the end of that algorithm, we're going to get those IP addresses. And what that means is, is we're going to be able to deliver digital advertising to those folks that you sent a direct mail piece to. What's really important about that is if you know about impressions and the importance of delivering impressions, you're going to get that impression with that direct mail piece and it's going to be followed up with impressions for a month long of delivered to the same home one to one, the same, no, no one else, just to that person associated with that IP address, which is associated to that physical address. So this is kind of that part where you kind of go, I think I get it. Does somebody have any questions about that? We're, I'm going to kind of drill this down some more, but basically physical address, algorithm, IP address, digital ads delivery. So does so it go to, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> The mobile device is different. Okay, so if your mobile device is logged in to that Wi-Fi, yes, those ads can be delivered then mobily. If it's outside of the IP address, outside of the Wi-Fi, and you're using your network, then you're, those ads can't be delivered to that. But we're going to get into that a little more about how those device IDs work and how you can still deliver ads to those. It has a, approximately a 50% match rate. But it's getting better. Most of the uh, campaigns that we've been doing have been 60, 68 percent. So it's getting better, and I and I think it's just as the better the better the data gets, the better the algorithm gets, the better the outcome. Yes, sir. It offers the capacity to uh, capability to display your ads and target con consumers where they target the internet. So in other words, it's you know you they're going where they want, and your ads are going to be where they are. Targeting without having to use cookies or geolocation tools, again, it's one-to-one. -one. It's not based on demographics. Access to over one million websites, and it, it's not on any adult or sites or any other sites that you wouldn't want your ad to appear on. It's continuously updating reporting metrics, including exposure clicks and conversions. You can actually, uh, as the campaign is going, we usually recommend a 30-day campaign. We can look at the metrics, and we can look at the results and see which ads are getting uh, better conversions, we can optimize it so that that ad size is getting more. And it actually does it automatically too, but we can also manually go in and optimize to make sure you're getting the best exposure. There's a flexibility to add conversion pixels and uh, post campaign um, analysis. Conversion pixels, of course, are those pixels you place on your thank you page when someone converts. So that way you'll know when you have a conversion. Um, if you have some more questions about that, I think that's on the glossary of terms. But again, it's a way for us to, in real time, determine who's converting, uh, clicking on the ad, and also converting. But then also there's a uh, post-campaign analysis that we can do to actually show one-to-one -one where your campaign was successful based on the number of uh, 
conversions that you had, the number of sales that you made, and I'll go into that a little bit too. So IP targeting and direct mail. So how many of you by show of hands do direct mail? All right, good, most of you. So you're gonna love this. So as you know, direct mail is the bomb. We love direct mail here, hopefully you do too. Uh, according to the 2017 uh, Data Marketing Association uh, Response Rate Report, direct mail is still king versus digital. 5.1% response rate versus 0.6 um, email, 0.6 paid search, 0.2 display, 0.4 social media. The household ROI for direct mail is about 29%. Over 100 million U.S. adults made a catalog purchase in 2016 and over 10 billion catalogs were mailed in 2016. So direct mail is not going anywhere. And <coughs> with the integration of IP targeting and direct mail, it's just going to get better. By the way, that's a real picture. That really happens when you do IP targeting. <laughs> so cool. um, direct mail and IP targeting. When IP targeting is combined with direct mail, the conversion rates typically see a significant improvement. We've seen everything from 60% to 186% lift over just doing direct mail. It's a true one-to-one -one relationship. Only those on the mailing lists are going to see these ads. No one else. With, the, with our matchback analysis, we can determine true ROI. That's what I was talking about at the end of the campaign. You give us your list of everybody that uh, completed a conversion, a sale, a donation, whatever it is. We'll match it back with the target group, which is the, um, the, the group that had IP targeting with direct mail versus the control group, which is just the direct mail, and then we can see the lift. So there's an actual one-to-one -one relationship where we can see and determine what the true ROI is. And I'll show you some examples of that with some of the um, case studies we do like this one. Uh, we did a case study with Kansas City Hospice. Um, they, it was their end of year uh, giving campaign. They, of course, wanted to increase their giving over last year. They had 11 segments, so we took a little bit out of each one to create a, um, a target group. There was almost 20,000 total recipients. About a quarter of those were the uh, target group with IP targeting and direct mail, and uh, three quarters of it were just direct mail only. They did five different ads combined with their direct mail piece. And uh, the results were astounding, I think. The, of the quarter uh, target group, the 5,600 mail piece, <laughs> there was a 4.4 donation rate with 250 donations. And the, the other, the control group, had a 1.57% donation rate with 219 donations. So there was actually more donations with the uh, quarter of the mailing than the uh, control group. That's a response lift of 184%. So needless to say, Kansas City Hospice was very happy with these results. KC Rep was another case study we did. Um, they did an end of year again push to uh, promote some ticket sales. They did a buy three uh, tickets at a discounted price and get a Christmas Carol ticket, very popular for them for only $20. They sent it out to past purchasers. Um, it was a uh, the target group was 4791 and the control group was 3300 3, and that actually was the whole group and there was about a 60% match there. Um, the results, the target list was responsible for 71% of all conversions and the response uh, lift was about uh, almost 70%. So they were very uh, happy. Then you replay uh, using high value locations to capture an audience. This is really cool. So Let's just say that you're a guy in Sandusky, Ohio, and you sell big flags, and your flags are much cooler than these flags. They're big, and, and you, you, uh, you want to be able to catch this audience. You want to be able to sell to them. This is your target crowd, and they're in that Arrowhead Stadium, and they're there every Sunday, and you can't afford to sit out in the parking lot and sell them. You can't afford to go around to sell them. And not only do you sell to, the, to Chiefs fans, you sell to every NFL team. You, your flags are the best, but you want to figure out how to target those people. Well, way to do it is venue replay because what you're going to do is, is you're going to, it allows you to capture people's device IDs. Now we're talking a little different here. Device IDs at events they attend, where they work, where they study, where they shop, where they go to football games, with the intent to advertise with this high value audience. You can actually go back in time to capture these. So now, now I got to kind of back up. A device ID is when you have a phone not connected to a Wi-Fi. Every, every digital phone, every phone has a device ID. And so when you do a geofence around a location with this, with this product, you can capture those device IDs. 
And when you capture these device IDs, when they go home, then we can transfer those device, and they, <laughs> this is getting confusing, and they go home, then we can get the IP addresses from them when they log into the Wi-Fi. So you're gonna get the device ID at the, at the event, they're gonna go home, they're gonna connect with their Wi-Fi, then we can capture their IP address. So in other words, okay. Okay, so, guy at a football game, he opens his phone, and you have to be able to browse in a, uh, brow use a browser that's gonna serve ads. So he's on his phone, whether it's in the parking lot or in the game, we're gonna be able to capture his device ID. When he goes home, we have the device ID information. When he goes home and he logs into his, his Wi-Fi, we can, we, can we can transfer that device ID into an IP address. So now we have the IP address. And of course, with the IP address, now we can send him ads. So now we can send him digital ads. But Let me show you something here. So we're gonna create a perimeter around a specific location. This is Arrowhead right here. But I wanna get the parking lots too. Because when they're, as you know, Arrowhead, they're going to they're gonna tailgate and they're going to be on ESPN.com and they're going to be looking for stuff. So that's where you can capture those IDs. Now, keep in mind, we can do this specifically by date, by this one game, and even down to the time. Or you can even do, like say, let's say they have uh, five home games over a six-week period. You can actually do that six-week period. As long as there's not a U2 concert in there you're going to be fine. You're going to be able to get everybody that's in that geo frame for a six week period. Or you can just do one game. You can, so again, you can go back six months. The reason we say six months is because the data past six months gets kind of degenerated. It's not, it's not quality. But we can go back as far as six months. Capture, again, capture the device IDs. And then we track the IDs back to the homes and capture the IP address when the devices connect to the Wi-Fi router. Then we can deliver ads to the IP address as well as the mobile devices. Now, I'm going to show you something later that uses Venue Replay for something else that's kind of cool. So remember this. There's going to be a quiz later. So again, map the location, identify target IDs and target locations, identify house IP from device All right, IDs. case study Any Operation Breakthrough. We did a uh, reverse of pen study with Operation Breakthrough. Uh, Travis Kelsey has a, um, a charity called 87 and Running, and he, he donates money to op donated money to Operation Breakthrough for every catch he made. A donation uh, went to Operation Breakthrough, so that was probably a pretty significant amount of money. Uh, he needed to engage also with Chiefs fans because every dollar they gave, he, he matched it. So we wanted to figure out a way to engage those fans. And what we did was we did a venue replay for that. Uh, we targeted four Chiefs home games. We captured 6,221 device IDs, so if that tells you kind of the ratio there. Uh, from those device IDs, we can't get all of the IP addresses, but we still got a pretty significant amount. 4,130 IP addresses were matched. And so we were able to serve 116,000 impressions. So those are Chiefs fans. And, uh, you know, again, those, those were at football games. So you know they're Chiefs fans. <coughs> okay, reverse append. Send direct mail to visitors of your website. I'll let that sink in a minute, so. This is, this is really cool, and this one is probably the most confusing to, to get, but it's really cool. So let's say that you're a clothing store, and you have locations in Dallas, Denver, Houston, but you also have e-commerce on your website. So you're selling on your website, but you're also selling in your stores. And you want, you want to put a stop to, not a stop to, but you want to be able to engage with the folks that have cart abandonment. They, they go to do e-commerce. They put things in the cart. I'm sure we've all done. We put things in our cart and then we leave. Well, with this, with this product, what we can do is if someone, depending on whatever criteria you want to set, whether it's cart abandonment or they visit X number of pages or visit these certain pages, we can, we can ha we'll have a pixel on, on your website. It'll put that pixel on their, on their website. We can get their IP address. So again, so visiting the website, capturing their IP address, and then we can actually convert, go backwards, take that IP address, and get their physical address. So now we're talking about being able to, someone who visited the website, card abandonment, or, or didn't convert, and being able to deliver them a direct mail piece within like, we'll, we'll get it in the mail within two business days. That's what reverse spend is. So 
the person that owns the store, what could be a really cool application for this, and we can also filter it and segment it. So let's just say that someone visit, visits this store, and we can tell by the IP address, physical address, that there is a location in that city. We can send them a card that says, hey, you know, you visited our store, here's a coupon to go check out what you looked at or to try on what you looked at. Here's a, even 10% off to go buy it. Or maybe, it's, again, it's to, to go back to the website and purchase. But there's, there's a lot of different possibilities for this. A lot of ways, so there's my example for you. <laughs> when you get into 15 locations, then you can. <laughs> so again, just to kind of review, someone visits your website, doesn't complete a transaction. A pixel is placed on your website to collect the IP address of the visitor. We can get that IP address with the algorithm. We, we can get their physical address, and we can send a direct mail piece to the visitor based on trigger points, or go trigger points or goals, and then a direct mail piece is mailed within two business days. So how it works, again, a pixel is placed. When a visitor comes to the site, based on the trigger points, the, ID the addresses are collected and matched to physical addresses, placed in the mail within two days. A uh, recent case study, a, a, poultry used, uh, a poultry shop used reverse append to increase sales during the holiday season. They got 5% um, of the prospects that were mailed, sub subsequently purchased, and they saw that as a 250% lift over just doing direct mail. So there was, they saw a definite increase in, in uh, conversions using this. So then you replay to direct mail. This is actually something that's relatively new. We've done it uh, a few times and uh, with great success, and we're kind of a guinea pig using this, and it's, and it's working. It's really cool. Um, the way this works is, so you remember Venue Replay, the one with the Chiefs, the arrowhead, you know, capturing all that. So what if you wanted to send, us, using our example of the, of the Chiefs guy, he wanted to send not only the, the digital ads to those fans, but also send them a direct mail piece. For this example, let's say it's a home show. Let's say we've got a, a Kansas City nursery who would love to reach these people that are visiting the home show in Kansas City. So we could do, again, that Venue Replay around that entire home show block out the dates that the home show ran, be able to capture all those device IDs of the people that went to that, get the IP addresses. Now we've got the IP addresses for all of the people that attended this, based on, not all of them, but the people that we were able to capture the device IDs. Then we can append those to get the physical address. So now not only are you delivering um, ads to them that say, hey, you went to the home show, Hope you had a good time. Now you need your flowers. Come see us at our nursery. And, and, and the thing that's really cool about that is they get that card in the mail too. And it's a physical location. So they, so they say, oh, well, here's a special. I'm going to go to that nursery. And again, this is a, this is a great audience because you know they're interested in, in a home and garden because they went to the home show. Digital ad design for optimum conversions. Um, I wanted to put this section in just because I think a huge part of the success of any campaign is you cannot overlook some basic rules of, of ad design because you could have all the data and all, all of the great, um, you know, great direct mail list and be able to get 70% match with IP targeting, but if you don't have the right call to action and the right uh, ad design, it's, it's just not going to work as effectively. Um, these are some banner ads that we did for uh, James B. Nutter. These are currently running. Uh, these are the basically the five sizes that we recommend. There's a mobile size, and then these other sizes are for more for desktop and laptop. Um, make sure your logo is visible. Make sure there's a call to action, and it's an easy to see call to action. You want to keep it simple. That's a pretty pretty simple ad. Not you know. Use imagery, and you know I don't know if you guys have noticed, but. This image has been used on TV, it's, it's in billboards. It's, they've, they've done a good job with uh, keeping that. And of course, the animation, they have some uh, GIF animation going there. And then they, again, keep it, if you're going to do uh, match it with a direct mail, make sure that they match. Make sure the message is the same so that when they get this in the mail and they see this, they're going to make that connection. Again, another, another thing that is important when we're talking about these campaigns is, is that when they click on this ad, that they're going to go to a landing page that is going to answer their, their question here, or it's going, to, it's going to deliver on this promise of this ad. So if it doesn't match, 
it's, it's not going to be very effective. And there has to be a way for them to convert online to really get, so we can get aligned with the ROI and see what that return is. Some landing page best practices. Uh, again, kind of some simple stuff maybe you already know, but make sure the, the, the offer matches the message of the ad. Clear and compelling headline. Call to action again should stand out. Branding matches the um, ad and the rest of the website because if they're going to leave your landing page and go to your website, you don't want them to have this adjustment to changing. Simple text bullet point features. Form fields, only what you need. If you have a huge form field, that's a turn off people will leave. Usually name, address, uh, phone number, email is fine. Um, have a strong central image. Um, and that's kind of an example there of, um, I'm, and I'm going to send this slideshow out so you can see this a little better. But again, simple. But uh, okay, that's all I got.